What's up guys? I'm running a little bit late today, not gonna be able to pull off the entire two hours, but I got something super cool and exciting, at least for me, <laughs> maybe not as much for you guys, but for me personally. So we got the new update that everybody can get extra rewards from Hydra, if they do up to 1.2 billion points, and you can get multiple extra chests every week because of it. Thanks Plarium, I thought it was super good update and everybody in my clan likes it too. And I just so happened to get an um, amulet from it. <laughs> and as you can see, of course I reworked it, so I didn't instantly get crit damage amulet. But I did get the 6 star amulet and I did get it rolled to crit damage. So now we upgraded it from the 5 star and this is gonna be a very noticeable difference. Although I'm still rocking, you know, my attack ring. It's kind of funny because people didn't even realize it. Many, many people were DMing me that the Galleus hits way harder than I was expecting and he did insane damage considering that you don't have defense buff. But not only do I not usually have defense buff on him, I don't even have defense ring. So this is what we're doing. It's still way better than having like defense ring with much more damage because stone skin is the king and it's just too good to pass up but i'm sure i will get it sorted out eventually so <laughs> it's fine it's fine we'll we'll do with what we got anyway let's see let's see how we do today by the way that's one thing people often ask me about like is it worth losing 100 attack to get four piece stone skin on my nukers and so on Obviously it depends on situations and champions and what kind of team comps that you run. But as you can see from this example and what I do on many others, it it generally is worth it. And I can tell you that like um, even when stone skin were not that new anymore, like I'm talking even before the accessories, but people in MAD, like the top top 20 accounts, the top 5 accounts in the game, they were running like attack rings on their CFs in defense and so on. The main thing is to get the bonuses and the stats are secondary. Like losing maybe, I don't know, 4k health or whatever, it might seem like bad and it looks bad on paper. But <laughs> having extra, extra 4k health and not stone skin is way worse. So I would often think about it from that perspective. I don't know if I want to go with Ankara here. Maybe we need to go with Mord. Mord is going to be Force Affinity too, so I think we'll go with Mord. Yeah. We don't have a lot of Polymorph though, assuming that he's going to ban the Armands. I need to get the Blessing on my Mord as soon as possible. But even on other situations, even if we're not talking about Stone Skin, is it worth to lose like 100 attack for... I don't know, refresh amulet. Depends, you know, depends, but I would say generally yes. I mean, even on a nuker, refresh amulet, for instance, would be very good. On support, even more so maybe. And it kind of depends what kind of nuker, but I used to run my Rotos with <laughs> refresh amulet, and I used to get so many angry messages when he procs it on A3, which happens like, you know, a lot, especially when you play the game a lot. It happens all the time and like multiple times on every session and people always complained about it. Okay, Harima, Yumeko. Should we go with, you know, Rooster and not ban the Yumeko? That could be something we could consider here. Maybe if we, you know, bank on him banning my, <laughs> my Armands and we don't ban the Yumeko. I'm not sure if I want to go with Mikage here or the... I feel like we could go with Mikage actually instead of Necrot. Let's go with Mikage. This is, we're playing on high stakes here, but let's see if that works out. I think he's gonna... he has to be like a CV now. He's gonna be afraid of the Mikage. And he doesn't have, I guess, Lazarus just to immunity buff, but I'm sure his Lazarus is not gonna be faster than my... Mikage, and my Mikage is gonna go before his nukers, I'm sure, unless he picks a Sifi. 
But Mikage doesn't get locked out by Yumeko. Neither does the Galleos. If he picks Sifi now, I'm instant gonna ban it. What? Okay, he's going with quadruple nuker. <laughs> but technically, both Lazarus and Siegfund are revivers, though. Am I gonna go for the Siegfund ban? I feel like I want... I, I'm leaning on between Siegfund and Marius. Now, let's go for Marius ban. Yeah, let's do Marius ban. I don't want to get the end people, even though I have more already and I picked her because of that, but I think that's the most risky factor here. We don't have the speed hour though, that's kind of issue, but I hope that I'm still faster than his Lazarus. Some people run super fast Lazaruses, like way, way about 300, but my Mikage is like 380, so even with him having speed hour and me not, surely my Mikage is gonna be faster than his Lazarus. The Yumeko is faster, maybe wouldn't have been without the Aura, but after that is my Mikage's turn. So he does have, you know, two champions in stone skin, so there's that, but we we're still gonna open with the stun. Imagine if he didn't have stone skin here, he would be screwed. This is what I mean when I say that it's not, you know, of course you sacrifice 100 attack to do this. It's not even, even something to really think about. You, you definitely want to get the stone skin. Now Mart could do buff strip, but she is locked out. But Rooster could also do it, but I don't know if I want to... I guess he got the immunity buff, so I think we... We have to open with the buff strip on the rooster. I guess we'll do that. I think, he, yeah, his Siegfried is gonna go before my mod, and that's actually good because that means that he's not able to one shot it. But it's kind of looking bad. I don't know if I can get a second turn on rooster here. We were not able to get the defense. Uh, d defense down because of the immunity. Maybe, maybe I should have banned the Lazarus. Yeah, that that was kind of an issue. But uh, yeah, no, I'll, yeah, we have the revive in one turn. I, I think we're done. I don't know if we can pull off the revive. I'm kind of tanky, but <laughs> he's running three of the best nukers in the game, so surely we can't survive that long. Okay, maybe maybe I did the wrong ban. Yeah. I already went with the more two, so I should have just stuck with that and gambled against the Marius and I should have just banned the Lazarus. Anyway, it happens. It's kind of, you know, the, the type of matchup that I can't <laughs> He needs to make mistakes, and I can't make any mistakes. That's where we're, we're at. If, I, I can't win it if I make anything, like, any mistakes. Okay, I, th I think we're gonna go with Moid again, but... It's kind of the same issue as in last battle, that he's gonna ban the Armands, and our first two champions don't have polymorph. I don't really like doing this, but we are gonna do it. Both of them hopefully will will have polymorph very soon though. It it could literally be like the next day or anytime. As soon as I get them in the shop. Okay, I think we want to go with Wukong on this one against our base. Do I want to do this? Yeah, let's let's go with this. And I could ban whoever I want in this battle. I don't think I'm actually gonna ban the Galatir or our base here because I kind of picked my champions to counter them. I think yeah, I think we're gonna ban one of the new girls are Shu Chen. 
Hmm. George, it can nuke me through stone skin. Maybe I should go for the George it ban. Yeah. I, I have a very weird team. <laughs> this is not the type of stuff that people are usually running, but we're kind of experimenting with new champions and it's uncharted territory. Both this guy and the last guy had like all the good, good mythic champions. We don't get an easy start to the video today. Ah, and and he removed the stone skin. That's unlucky. And we didn't. He, he has stone skin, but he also has one piece reaction. So not only did we not resist with the stone skin, but we also didn't proc reaction. So extremely, like you know. We lost all of the rolls. I guess the reaction is only, you know, 25%, but still, we, we lost both that and, and the boss trip. Should, should have given me at least one of those. And and the others lost the stone skin too, so... That, that's why you need polymorph. Like, we lost the stone skin, maybe if we had polymorph on Narcissus and Mord, maybe it would have gone the other way around. And we definitely would have, if they do, if those two had polymorph, it definitely would, like, you know, I would have had much higher chance to win than lose against it. There, there was, like, so many RNG elements in the play, but it, it was already kind of 50 50, but well, it, it was more like 60 50 for me, actually. But if we added two more polymorphs, I, it, it would have been much more stacked in my favor. Considering that he busted, was it two, two or three stone skin champions? Yeah, he he busted, he busted two stone skin champions. Narsus didn't proc reaction. He's in triple reaction, and Galleus didn't proc reaction. He has one, so we we lost every roll. That that was that was actually very unlucky. No, not the math guy. That's kind of many variables to calculate instantly, but I mean, I'm sure it's not that astronomical to lose everything, but kind of unlucky. But yeah, even though we, we lost two in a row, it kind of, you know, gives me hope as well, because if you happen to get some good new mythic champions and I kind of got some confidence boost because I actually pulled two music champions, even though, you know, they were the bad ones. Literally the worst one and one of the worst ones. But you never know if, if you, you know, most of the music champions are still insanely good. So if you just happen to pull one of them or maybe even a couple, it's going to be very game changing. So far I've been only using Mord and not Ankara, and my Ankara is definitely more tanky than my Mord. My Mord gear is still kind of a work in progress, so maybe that was a little bit mistake on hindsight too. I probably should usually pick Double Reviver if I go with Mord. Okay, we're we're not getting a break today. I guess we're gonna go with the rooster. Lazarus could weak it against it too, but Rotos could have good good matchup against the Angora. So uh, on against the Greeks, yeah. Maybe I'll save the Nuger as the last pick. Let's go with Double Reviver and the Nuker.
I generally do prefer Wukong over Mikake, honestly, because everybody has Thorn skin anyway, and if they don't, I'm sure they're faster than me. And like in this situation, Wukong could steal all of the buffs from our base, it can be very good. And you know, he gets revived and so on, but sometimes I have to go with Mikake if I'm gonna get locked out. We, we, we do have kind of, you know, he has a lot of buffs which actually kind of makes him tanky here. But we do have double buff strip, so maybe that will work out. I'm kind of more worried if I can survive the Lazarus assault. And we don't really have like Decret or Helicat or anything to protect the rooster. I don't know if I should have picked one, maybe like Necret instead of the one of the Revivers, but Lazarus does ignore shields anyway, so I don't know if it's actually that good. Okay, looks like we can stun the Harima at least, so it was worth going with the Mikage. Oh, but <laughs> dude. Every time we get buff strip, we lose the stone skin on, on the rooster. We're getting so unlucky today. Give me a break. Come on. Okay, I think I think he weak hit on the rooster though, so I guess that's fine. Wait, how can we kill Harima? We don't have defense buff. I don't know if we're gonna hit hard enough. <laughs> How much polymorph does he have? Two polymorphs, so there's a good chance that we, we will get polymorph though. Okay, nice. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if I should get too happy about winning this guy, but we won, so I I'll take it. Good job, Carlos. And, and I guess even the Mikage paid off here, but like I said, my feelings about Mikage is that She's 380 speed now. I'm kind of getting on the faster side, but it's not really fast in the level that I'm at. There's people that are almost 100 speed faster than that, and actually quite a good amount of them. If even like, you know, I think I even got two clan mates that are 460 plus, and I'm sure clans like, you know, IPR and MAD probably most people are 460 plus. But, um,. The, the issue, like another issue with her is that, like I mentioned before, that if they are not super fast, they probably have stone skin. Probably they have stone skin regardless, but especially if they are not insanely fast, they are gonna have stone skin. So, even if I go first on my Mikage, which I don't go always, only sometimes, but in those situations where I go first, I'm not super confident that I can really stun anybody because they're probably all in stone skin anyway. Okay, he got the Narthus, but now we have the Rooster and Rotos, so it's not <laughs> it's not as bad as it used to be. I'm definitely gonna go with UDK though, I think. Should I? I could no, let's not pick it yet. Let's not pick it yet. Um Let's go with Angora. Let's go Rotos Angora. If he wants to go with UDK, that's fine. I I have Armans already, and I could pick Wukong or something like that. What if I ban the Narthus and pick Necret? I would have to deal with the UDK, but Rooster has buff strip, probably it's not going to be enough accuracy though, but Rooster and Armans both have it, and if he bans Armans then Rooster can still deal damage So with AoE, so maybe I can actually 
may be surprised him and not ban the UDK. Maybe it's not a surprise. <laughs> if I, maybe maybe I'm being like a lot less smart and smarter than I think I am because if I pick Necret, surely he's gonna assume that I'm gonna ban Narsis because if I pick Necret against Narsis, I'm you know countering myself as hard as I can. Ob obviously, I'm not gonna play against Narsis with Necret, but Necret can be pretty good against Harima. Not really most of the stuff in the meta right now. Or, you know, Lazarius, um, Siegfrund, um, like many champions can kind of ignore the Necro shields. M most of them, in fact, most of the meta nukers can do it, but Harima can't do it. Okay, let's see. Rod Rodos and Ankara. Neither one of them got, got weak hit, sadly. I like to use them against Grixia because of that. Because if if one of them gets weak hit, then they don't... Um, their, their skills don't go to cooldowns. Wait, oh, he did weak hit on Ankara. M my bad, my bad. I thought he didn't. Well, this is the only one that matters, really. Should I just open instantly? I think, yeah, I think we're... Nah, let's save it for one then, yeah. And I think on Rooster we're also instantly just gonna open with the decrease defense instead of the buff strip because I'm not gonna assume that I have enough damage to buff strip the UDK or Jatsus. What? How How didn't I put the defense buff? Or did he remove the defense buff on Harima with the mastery? Maybe that's what happened. I feel like there's no way that the Harima resisted my defense debuff. Surely not. Anyway, Rotos is not really doing a lot here for, for now. Also, also, his Harima isn't really doing anything either. He doesn't have defense buff. I have a very tanky team with shields, so I think I did the right Right choice here. I I don't. Maybe he wasn't expecting me to go for the narcissist plan when he picked the UDK. But in this situation, when we knew his team, Rodos doesn't really have to do anything right now. If I didn't have the Armands, then I couldn't have done this. But since we had Armands too, he could only ban Armands or the Rooster. But if he did ban the Rooster then Armands could still, you know, polymorph the UDK and we would have means to kill him with Rodos. So he was kind of on a checkmate that in either, the sit either situation I can still deal damage. Maybe that's not a checkmate, but I wasn't in a checkmate. <laughs> Let's put it that way. M maybe, yeah, maybe it's better to put it, put it that, that way. I'm super used to getting into the situation that I'm both locked out and they have UDK or R base or maybe multiple lockouts and I just I can't do anything. And my new girls are <laughs> Narcissus and Rotos and they're gonna ban Narcissus and I can't do anything. But not today. Rooster is kind of having, you know, Maybe a little bit hard time to finish this off. I don't know if I should even switch to the other form. Maybe I should do it. Let's do it. Might as well. We'll get the defense buff. I guess we're gonna out rotate the Necret buffs, but we'll get them back. But uh, it's gonna be a long fight anyway, so we'll play it, play it smart and buff ourselves too. When the stone skin on the UDK ends, I'm gonna be able to do things, so it's fine. And even if the Harima is able to steal some defense and cap out, he doesn't have defense buff on her, so it's not that intimidating. Defense buff is insanely strong in PvP. Often people kind of underestimate it. It is very hit and miss though, because 
sometimes or even pretty often enemies might fully ignore your defense when they have you know savage and rock helm smasher and have 50 percent ignore from masteries which many champions do but when they don't do it or when it's somebody like harima the defense buff makes a massive difference and especially if if they don't proc the Helm Smasher, then they basically don't do any damage. I really think that um, obviously, you know, Parium is not gonna make champions around what's the meta or needed for PvP, I'm sure. But I think it would be very healthy for the game to give us multiple other good champions with defense buff that are revivers. Because they, they kind of have done that with attack champions. I don't know if you guys can like, if you have noticed, but there used to be like one champion with attack buff in the early days, maybe two, because Gorgorab used to be very popular, but when we got the Arbiter, everybody was using Arbiter and Duchess, but you know, Duchess was kind of rare and hard to get, and Duchess used to be super meta because of that for many, many years. Uh... Should we do the defense? Yeah, let's do the defense buff and then we're gonna switch the form next turn. When attack nukers needed the buff and we didn't have the stuff that we do nowadays, Duchess used to be very popular in both offense and defense in Classic Arena and actually top tier champion, which he hasn't been for a while. But they also, I guess, realized that we need more attack buff champions and it's super mandatory and in the time span maybe like around three to two years ago they released like so many different champions with attack buff to try to mitigate that issue we got we got Brockney and many other ones and they keep releasing supports with attack buff but they have kind of neglected the defense buff and we do need that as well. It's only C feed really that is used. Are we 2 2 right now? Yeah, 2 2, okay. We'll take it. We, we had a little bit rough start. How bad? I, I don't know if it means something else or is, is it trying to be like, you know, how you would verbally say how bad? I guess Americans call it like W and they don't call it just like D, so I don't know how you even say it. Do you say how W bad or you, do you just say how bad? I don't even know. Okay, here, let's, let's debate the American, you know, language again. So this is kind of a weird thing, I have thought about it few times before so w like you you don't say like the letter v which is the one not double but just one you say that as v you don't say it as u u is the like u letter in finnish th this one this is this is u u the, why don't you say it double v why do you say it w like that that doesn't make any sense to me Again, I'm not like English language scholar, but it's one of those things that I feel like English language often is a little bit confusing. Maybe this is gonna be another Necrot battle. I've also said this before on videos, but you know, Finnish language is very different because Every single word is pronounced exactly how you would pronounce all of the letters individually. You never change the pronunciation to anything. So you need you don't need to like, you know, memorize specific words. How do you say them? If you know the Finnish alphabet, how you pronounce the alphabet words, then you can say any word and it's that simple. And I don't understand why you would make it any other way. Other than, you know, to be like, you know, make it hard for people and try to flex that some, you know, plebs in the middle century don't don't know how to pronounce the words. 
I feel like it must be something, something very dumb like that, that the nobles just wanted to pr pronounce the words in a hard way that the plebs don't understand it. Pro probably not, but that's the most logical explanation to me. A and Finland is like, you know, a country or back in the days when we were just like, not even a real country, but just like a vast wilderness. But Finnish people that were, you know, the last like nomadic, like nomadic ethnicity in Finland, basically no, no civilization. They were just hunter gatherers and living in the woods. I guess we didn't really think about that kind of, you know, <laughs> like um, high class stuff until much later, like when the Swedish people started invading us and using us as war slaves, that's when Finnish people started to have some kind of hierarchy and thinking about that, that kind of stuff. Okay, it feels nice to not get totally... <laughs> not get totally cucked by uh, the lockout, but I guess we got cucked by Polymorph, so you can't win, but we'll take it. This is gonna happen, at least, you know, I don't think it's game over yet, so... He is taking that risk with both Harima and Taras too, and sometimes you get polymorphed and sometimes sometimes you're the one doing the polymorph, so it's okay. And I'm I'm always, you know, minimaxing the amount of polymorph I use in my teams too, of course, so I, I wish I would have, you know, Polymorph on both Narciss or Ankara though. I wasn't really sure. I knew that I was gonna go either one of them as 6 star next, but I didn't know which one. And then I decided that it's actually gonna be Narciss and not Ankara. But I kind of assumed that by the time that I got one of them 6 star, I probably wouldn't want to get the other one to 6 star polymorph anymore and there's gonna be new things and maybe they fall out of the meta or something like that. And obviously there's still a long time until I can get both of them 6 star, but so far it kind of looks like I'm probably gonna aim to get 6 star blessing on both of them. And I'm gonna pray that the faction lord champion, maybe that's not the right word because I'm praying to... to <laughs> to get taken advantage by Plarium, but maybe the Faction Lord Champion of Knight Revenant, which is still not gonna really come anytime soon, maybe that's gonna be really good. I think if they're smart about it, the Knight Revenant faction has quite many top tier PvP champions, and if they make some kind of good Faction Lord there that is relevant to PvP, it would be something that many people wail for and try to get. They might miss that opportunity, but I feel like, you know, people often think that, you know, everybody is stupid. And, you know, they always say that, you know, people do things out of, you know, not because of, like, like not, not because of malice, but they do bad things because of incompetence. I kind of agree with that sentiment, but I kind of think it the other way around that. I don't think people generally are stupid, and if they make something stupid, they probably have some other reason for it that you didn't think about. And people often, you know, say that Plarium doesn't understand the balance and the game. And I'm sure they understand it to the ex extent that they want to. It's just that the priority is not to, you know, balance the game. The, the priority is to sell as much charts as possible, and and that's why we don't don't get the game balanced the way we want to and that's why i also think that there's very very good possibility that they will um seize on the opportunity to, to try to make a really good faction lord on night revenant 
let, let me quickly show it to you. So obviously there's, you know, Trixia, Ankora and Narcissus, but there's a couple other good champions here too. We, we got Hegemon, which actually still get used sometimes, even in Classic Arena. There's been several people that have finished with Hegemon in top 20 in the last few months. He's not in top 20 every time, but he actually occasionally gets used in, in defense team, defense teams, and also he does get used in live arena a little bit. Stone skin is kind of a big problem for him, but he's still quite good. Not, not the meta like he used to be. <laughs> no, no, not the level that, you know, people are gonna buy accounts to get Hegemon like scratched it and so on. <laughs> he's not quite that good anymore. People will do that for Galatir and Krixia and not Hegemon. But we also have Chorchid, and Chorchid is of course obviously super meta and used in speed teams. And then there is, you know, couple, not couple, but we have like, you know, maybe Caius and Arix get used sometimes. But just the fact that you have like Grixia, Ankor and Narses plus Chorchid, those four are like super, super, super meta champions in PvP. And you can only fit, fit three of those in one team anyway. So I think there's there's a good potential to make make a whale worthy champion in, in that faction. Okay, let's continue. Let's let's get some wins. That, that being said, I don't really hope to get Hegemon. Even though he used to be considered the best champion in the game on multiple different like times, and he used to be super meta all the way to the stone skin. And after that he kind of completely died, and now he has made a small comeback. But <laughs> obviously there's other champions that I would rather get on voids like Sifi, for for instance. But then, then again, you know, if I were to get Hegemon, I probably can't really complain about it that much because it's still, it will still be the second best void champion that I have pulled, and it would be better than almost any void champion except a few. Okay, Marius again, and again we don't have a lot of Polymorph in the team. I think we'll go with Wukong this time. I, I do like to pick Wukong against Marius. Not only do we have Polymorph, but we get revived and come back and hopefully can Polymorph it again, so... Nobody's going with Armands. This is kind of a weird battle. I don't know if I should pick Armands at this point anymore. Since he has double booster and and Marius, but I think we'll go with this. This is a weird battle. I I, I almost feel like I should have just not picked Armands, and we could have gotten one battle on the video <laughs> where nobody picked it. I don't know if like how often does that even happen in Gold for. I don't think I've ever seen this happening before, so... We almost did it, but he's gonna ban the Armand, so... He, it was a worthy pick. And if he doesn't, then... Armand does have Polymorph. Do I want to go with Rotos or Galleus here? I think both of them could be, could be good, actually. Maybe we'll gamble this way. Let's go for the Sifi ban and go with the Galleos. He can still get the def immunity buff from Lazarus though, but oh, he did ban. I was gonna say that he might play cheeky here and not ban my Armands and maybe ban my Narsus or something like that. 
assuming that he has double booster and is certainly gonna go before me. Maybe that way if we ban the CV we could cut in with Armons, but that didn't happen. <clears throat> Okay, we got Polymorph, finally some some good RNG at the start of the battle, but he can still buff strip our, our rooster and ruin my day. Okay, he did that, but can we get a weak hit? If we get weak hit on rooster, it's still okay. Okay, no, no, almost. We almost got it, but not, not quite. Okay, we got cooldowns, but I don't know if, uh, are we gonna get enfeebled or, or not? Oh wait, oh, oh, we can polymorph it, now we're good. I forgot that he killed my Wukong before the Lazarus lockout. Okay, it's done. It looked very, very bad after the good polymorph at the start, but okay, we're, we're totally fine. Even with the stone skin, though, I'm kind of having trouble getting turns on Gallows because I feel like in the battles today, like pretty much every single battle, the stone skin was was removed before he got the turn. He barely got like you know to survive because of it. Okay, we're against an SP member now. This. Account's name is literally the tool. I don't know if that means that he's using the the program or not, but we can usually see from his speaks if it's one of those bot accounts or wait or if it's an actual player. I'm so confused. This is one of those accounts. I definitely saw the SP avatar, but it's using the OC cluster attack, even though it's not in OC. It's so confusing. They, they have like Half of their members using the OC cluster attack, even though they say they themselves wanted to leave the cluster and don't want to be associated with them. You, you can make your own conclusions about that. Why would they do it? But in any case, they chose to do it, but they still keep using those attacks. It's kind of, you know, a little bit slimy if you ask me, but they are using the excuse. I have confronted them about it a couple times and they keep using it the excuse that they just are too lazy to change it but um they are not they are not too lazy to queue for um oh fuck they are not too lazy to queue for pvp and talk about it that they used to attack so i feel like you know they are doing it on purpose but who cares i think we go with um Rotos and UDK here and actually go for the Narcissus ban. I think that would be actually, yeah, that, that would be good setup. Even if he picks a lockout now, I'm definitely gonna go for the Narcissus ban. I can't really tell if it's a bot or no from these picks, but it's not giving me like clear indication that it's a bot. If you're not familiar with this, like, why am I being mean to them and calling them bots? Literally, like, in this clan where this guy or this account is from, the clan leader owns, like, I don't know, like 15 accounts. It, it might be more than 15 accounts. He owns, like, 15 accounts. Half, half of the second clan in their cluster is just his alt accounts. And they have a bot that plays live arena for them. It also does everything else in the game, but it does live arena. And often when you meet people from this clan, th this clan, or most of the people that you meet from this clan are bots, but I think this guy might not be a bot. You usually the bots are always going with like, you know, some combination of Rotos, Taras and uh, Leorios, and they have the same template that they pick. I don't think this guy is one of them, but he could be. I'm sure in the comments somebody will will know and edu educate me e every time i think that they are not bots everybody is telling me in comments that they are bots so i'm not gonna make any judgments about that 
Okay, that didn't hit very hard, and he's gonna be able to claim the decrease defense. Not that it bothers me that they, you know, they are using bots in live, live arena. I don't think it really hurts anybody. I'm not making making like um, a value adjustment or complaint or anything like that. As long as you know, as long as they don't boost and cheat in classic arena, which you know they have done. Pretty sure, allegedly, everybody in platinum arena thinks that way. If they don't do that, then I, I don't care if they, you know, both back team arena battles or live arena. I can definitely understand and relate why they would do it. I, I wouldn't consider it this cheating because it doesn't really have any competitive implications. Maybe you know a little bit that they are active and get the points, but the, it doesn't really matter. But, but the accounts that they have that are running the library in a bot, they are so strong that, you know, multiple of those bot accounts are like 8,000 points or whatever. <laughs> and they are actually way higher points than me and nobody is ever playing them. You, usually, actually, you know, I don't think I really lose to those bot accounts. Like, especially the, the ones that are like high points. They are super good battles for me because it's always an easy win for the video. <laughs> against the higher point opponent so i'm not really complaining per se as long as you know it's not filled with bots um i don't know if we can kill the marriage yet i i, I think we'll just play it safe and kill the angora and steal some health N next time we'll go for the double kill on marriage and angora Wait, can we can we kill it with the A1? <laughs> I almost could have with the decreased defense, but we didn't proc crit there. I remember when I think it was on the second last video, my Angora did was it 17,000 or 27,000 crit or something crazy like that. <laughs> and it was super shocking to me, and multiple people were pointing it out on the video that. Do you have crit damage on your anchor, or how can she hit that hard? I don't know if we can kill it with the A2 nook now because, yeah, it's it's without defense buff. I don't really usually use the second form, and I just stick to the first one. But this is basically over, and we're just rotating the skills. Wait, it says tool, tool, but that's not like O2, the content creator. I, I don't think it's him. Yeah, that's um, that's one of the accounts. I don't know if this was a bot one. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. You guys can debate about it. I think this wasn't a bot, but I'm, I'm not even sure. I feel like I always say that. Maybe this one isn't a bot, and then everybody everybody tells me it was a bot, so probably it was a bot, but I, I can't tell. Like I said, usually they run Rotos, Leorios and Taras, and that wasn't one of those bots, but it could, it could still also be a bot. Oh, against a fellow clanmate, nice. Res representation of the arena enjoyers. By the way, we are full right now, you know, but there will always be 
So lots at some point. And we are trying to make the best possible plan. And actually, I know some people are, you know, like <laughs> calling it the meme that I say that we're going to make one of the top arena class. But I think we're, you know, depends what what is the threshold for top clans right now. But we're definitely getting there. I'm sure we are in like, you know, top 20 or top 10 arena class or something like that. But we're aspiring to be higher. We're really trying to make this a good clan. So any people that are interested of that and, you know, like the basic concepts that we're not tryharding CVC, but we are super into PvP and we're, you know, like a chill clan, we don't want any drama. We we want people to get along and help each other in PvP. If that sounds something you would be interested, then hit me up. But you know, clan is full and we are we're trying to get the best possible accounts and most active players. So you know, not everybody can join, but if the clan gets super popping, we, we might do a second clan at some point but especially those you know st strong accounts that are competing in classic arena and live arena consider joining our clan i want to get more people in our clan in top 100 live arena and top 20 classic arena that that's the goal <sighs> Should we go with the dots? Let's go with the dots. I don't really know what I want to pick yet, so let's just go with the safe pick. I'm not, not saying that you can't join the clan if you're not like top 100 or top 20, but you know, that's where we're aiming. If you're, you know, super active player that like the core ideas of, of our clan and you have a good account at, at this point where we're looking for strong accounts, then hit me up. He went with the Hellicat. I don't know if, if he's, you know, making a point here, but um, Wukong, I'm sure he has resistance on the UDK though, but I think we'll go with the Wukong. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have picked Necret actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, he banned the Narsus. I probably, yeah, I probably should have picked Necret to be honest. I can s still buff strip him with Kalleos, so Necret would have added a lot more survivability to the Rooster, and he does work against Harima, so that probably would have been the play. But it's becoming a thing, you know. I'm actually fighting my clan mates pretty often, almost in every video. Okay, I think we're gonna open with the A3 because I'm gonna gonna assume that he has resistance. Yeah, okay. I don't know if I should retink my Wukong build, but I built him in the supersonic and high speed instead of high accuracy and it does kind of seem like most of the Wukongs are in resistance so I don't know if I should go back to high accuracy build. Sometimes it can be super good though like when you can cut into the speed teams so it kind of depends you, you would almost want to have <laughs> want to have two Wukongs one for UDK teams and one for every other team. Okay, nice. We we one shot the Harima. That's not something that I I was able to ever do before. And now that we got that, we reset the cooldown of the nuke, so we can do it again. He's gonna get the immunity buff though, but we can we can still do it again. Oh, what? How are we outlapping the Sifi so hard? I think that's it. Unless we get polymorph. Should I go? Maybe I should. Maybe I should do the A3 here and not the A2, just so that I don't get polymorph to play it safe. I, I could have done the A2 and it would have killed the Harima, but it's already over, so let's be let's be smart and not try to flex on the video.
also, you know, we're trying to, you know, focus on the sieges. Even though we, like, we started out from tier 6 in the sieges, but then we hopped the clan in order to have easier time on Hydra. And now we're kind of climbing back up, so we're not super high yet, even though we started from tier 6. But I think we have very strong siege clan, and if we can make it even a little bit stronger, I think we're we're getting up there. So if you're into that also, hit me up on the Discord. But again, you know, right now we're full. It's not like, you know, we're, we're not gonna replace old members when we get newer new ones or stronger ones. So it, it is very RNG when we get new spots in the clan and they're usually, you know, filled instantly or they're filled before we get them. But as a long term thing, hit me up. I know I'm shilling a little bit here and I've been doing it a lot lately, but the Discord and the clan is like a big project for me and I want to focus on both of them. The, the clan is actually going pretty good, you know. I was kind of expecting that it would go well, because I don't think there is really any other like PvP focused endgame clans that are not like are specifically trying to be very free to play friendly or not having any kind of um, mandates on spending or Hydra points and so on, CVC points. So I, I always thought that it's like a good niche that nobody's feeling, but there were many people that were doubting me and saying that I'm not going to be able to make a good clan. And it's kind of going better than I thought, honestly. I thought it would go well, but I, I think we're doing super good. O or only issue that we, we had is that, you know, if you want to get involved in the clan, we could definitely um, like have some people become like officers in the clan in charge of things. We, we, we had um, one person that, you know, quit and she was very valuable person in the clan, like taking big part into the, you know, decision making and planning and so on. We could use some of that. It, it was kind of a bad thing that she quit, but outside of that, we're doing super well. <laughs> Shout out to Vigerka. That, that's the person that I'm talking about. Maybe we'll go with the Necrot this time and ban the Taras. If he picks like Sifi and Marichka, it might be kind of hard to kill his team, but we have both Armands and Narses, so it will be fine. He can only ban one of them. Did pay to play? Okay, he didn't say anything. I was sure he was gonna attack me in Discord, but I guess he didn't. By the way, you know, I'm not gonna get offended if you... If you tag me in Discord after you, after you beat me in battle, it happens all the time. I don't get offended. I think some people are scared to do it and some people do it on purpose to antagonize. But, you know, I don't mind that stuff. It's all fun for me. So feel free to tag me if you beat me. Or even if you, even if you don't, of course. Yeah, let's, let's go with the Taras ban. He's also going with the Clycat. I was actually planning to try him and make a video about him. I don't know when, but sometime soon. Because Clycat is one of the basically three revivers in the game with defense buff, along with Sifi and Mord. So, and I happen to have him. I pulled him maybe like a month ago, not too long ago. I actually built him, but I haven't been using him yet. So, I might do that very soon. Maybe I should do it today, actually. 
so, so he has a revive and defense buff, though they are on the same skill. And he gets extra turn if he doesn't revive anybody. With the defense buff, I think. Yeah, that, that's what happened there. Uh, oh, he's, he's built it in protection set. Actually, mine is in protection set as well. He also gives increased damage uh, to allies from his passive if they have whale buff. And also protection set if you have it at 9 piece. Gives you extra damage. I actually, I can show it to you, but I have my Glyget in in exactly that kind of build. But I don't think I even, you know, leveled up the gear yet. It, it was just a work in progress and I don't have super, super strong protection set for him yet. But maybe I should make a make a test with him even without like fully decked out gear. Let me. I need to open the optimizer so I can show it. A little bit sad that my anchor died that fast though. I was kind of expecting that she wouldn't die that easily. I guess, you know, I guess the what we were talking about, the damage damage increase from the the passive and the protections that was adding up, and he was actually able to kill my anchor that easily. Granted that anchor is, you know, magic affinity and Harima is a force affinity nuker, but still. Okay, okay, we, lo we lost that one. It's kind of interesting and very topical, let me show you. <laughs> Here is what gear I have on my Glyget right now. He is not built at all, I just put some random placeholder gear, just so that I remember to uh, put him in protection set later and try this out. Haven't, I don't think I have seen anybody use him at all, maybe, and especially not with protection set. So it's kind of funny that this guy was actually doing the strategy, but that's a good reminder that I I need to try it out and make a video about it. Th the one thing I don't like about that is that the build there wasn't, you know, super strong, but as you could see, I don't have like Ascension on the items, but I have many other things that I need to Ascension too, so I don't think I really have the spare resources to get HP on these pieces, so it's not really going to be a completed set, and the banner is kind of uh, not good, but but the 5-piece protection, the 9-piece protection actually kind of makes sense on him. So with like Maud, Ankara and Duchess, I already kind of have many revivers, so not like I really need just another reviver, but he does do the defense buff, so I probably should should have him for that. Especially if we are becoming a rooster main that is happening lately. Okay, Taras and Marichka. The rest of the team doesn't look as intimidating. I think that's a new Pukong. Maybe. Has to be. If it was a support Wukong, it would definitely be in Polymorph. So I think we'll go with UDK. And Rotos. Yeah, not gonna go Rooster in, in this battle. Okay, he instantly gave up. I think we were gonna win that one, but <laughs> he didn't have to give it us like that. I don't know if he actually quit the battle or if there was some issue with the Plarium client, because it also happens to me sometimes that it kicks you out from the battle, even though you don't disconnect from the game or anything like that, and it automatically gives you a loss. But 
doesn't really matter. It's not like classic arena reset. Having one loss might not be fun, but it doesn't really ruin your day or matter in the big picture. Okay, that's definitely a new Wukong 2, since he's running the Mikage. It's a very popular and powerful combination, which means that he probably has enough accuracy to call him off the UDK, but I think we might still go with that though. Yeah, let's go with Rotos and UDK again. I saw something something super funny in my other screen, but I I don't think I'm gonna show that on video. It's some DMs. Uh I think we'll go with Necret. We can kind of do it because we're already taking the polymorphs on the UDK, though he might ban it. I think he's gonna ban the UDK. That that's kind of gonna Yeah, ne negate the Necret. Hmm, what should I... I don't know what I could have picked in that situation. He already got the Wukong, I probably would have wanted to pick Wukong myself here. We still have two nukers, so it's not that big issue if he can polymorph the Rotos with the... What? Okay, I would have just polymorphed the Rotos and not the Necret, but... Okay. Well, I... I maybe that makes sense, because... He can weak hit on the Rotos. Probably he would have otherwise done it. Yeah, let's let's get rid of the attack buff on the Wukong. Damn, almost. Not quite. Okay, <laughs> that's it, we got it. We're kind of, you know, we didn't have like insane start, we were kind of going back and forth, but we're having a nice sprint at the end, gaining some nice points. Good. Like I said, I keep saying it and I'm not playing live arena every day, even though at the start I was literally playing it every day for a very long time, but I haven't been as active as some of the most active players in Live Arena, and I do want to get back to the top 100 again, so I need to start start doing Marathon. M maybe there will be a lot more Live Arena videos than there has been lately. But this weekend I'm not gonna be home, so I'm not, I'm not gonna do Live Arena videos. I, I might play it, but it's gonna be on phone and not on video. We're gonna have like a big party uh, with our family, having the <laughs> traditional crawfish party that I was talking about before, which is a Nordic thing. And we're also having some relatives and even some some guests from like other countries. So it, it's kind of no, not big party in terms of that we have like dozens and dozens of people, but. It's kind of big party in the sense that we're gonna hang out the weekend and we're gonna have some some guests from you know from other 
from other other side of Europe. Do I want to go with Narsus and Angora here, or should I just pick some Polymorph first? Let's go with Wukong and something. Yeah, Wukong and Angora, maybe that's fine. He's not gonna pick Narsus anyway. And if he does, then maybe it wouldn't be that bad. He did go with Triple Nuger, though. Did we fight this guy? I feel like we fought somebody that pretty much used the same team earlier today. I think it probably was this guy. And I think I lost that, that one and I made the wrong ban or something like that. Necrot and Rooster. Let's go with Necrot and Rooster. Wait, wait. I'm being dumb. We don't have two Nougars. I have to go with two Nougars here. I For a second I thought the, <laughs> thought the Wugong was a Nougar, but he's not. I used to run him in that a lot. I almost could go back to the Nook Wugong since I'm running Galelos now, and I'm not as deterred by the Harima teams. I have alternative options against that. I could go with the Nuke Wukong, but I do like the support build as well. Maybe, I, maybe I'll do that next week. I'll go back to Nuke Wukong and I'll think about some other support options. Maybe I'll start running Mikake a little, little bit more. They mostly do the same things. and. I usually prefer the Wukong. But if I'm running both of them maybe, like other people do, then I'm getting the best out of both worlds. I don't know who I want to ban here. I feel like I probably made the same same mistake last time and it, it wasn't good. Yeah, I think we had the exact same battle last time and I screwed it up then too. Maybe I should have just gone for the Yumeko ban. I think last time I had Mord instead of Ankara though. But okay, yeah, if I, if I ban the Yumeko here, my Wukong could have gone first and polymorphed one of the Nukers. Or maybe Bash Trip the Stone Skin or anything. I don't think I have gotten a single polymorph on the Marius teams today. I really need to get some of some of that. No, <laughs> that happened. But also both of my Nukers got poly uh, got not polymorph but enfeebled. So <laughs> I got what I wanted in like a, the worst possible way. It's one of those you know like genie in the lamp thing things that they give you what you said. But in the worst possible way. Like you, you want to, you know, you want to become strong, and then they make you some ugly-looking hideous giant or something like that. Technically, I got the polymorph on 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 the Marius, but I lost the battle because of it. Fuck. Do we have time for? No, okay, no, no more. We ended up on a loss. It probably was my mistake, though. It was a hard matchup, but I should have just banned the Yumako. That, that would have been smarter, because I was running the fast support Wukong. But hopefully next time I'll rem remember it and do better. And this is, this is still us running Running the, the rooster without defense buff, so imagine if I had Sifi, or maybe Glycad is gonna turn out well and I'm gonna start using him a lot. Who knows? So we'll see that some other time. 
anyway that's it have a nice weekend hope you do insanely well in live arena and get some amazing amazing shark pulls i don't know if you're gonna pull on the weekend but you know there's gonna be events so i'm sure many will anyway that's it see ya